Hi, this is Neil from Pro Tools PC. Today I'm going to show you a first look at the new Waves Abbey Road Studios Reverb Plates. This is a new plugin from Waves in the Abbey Road series. It was debuted at the NAM show in January. So we're going to have a walkthrough. I'll show you through the controls and we're going to have a listen and see what it's got to offer. We're going to start by walking through the user interface. Uh, the plates plugin itself is based on the EMT140 plate, which is just a giant sheet of metal hanging on springs inside a big wooden cabinet, uh, eight feet long, four feet high. And this graphical interface is a depiction of that uh, with the side off so that you can see inside. So this is a tiled room it's kept in at Abbey Road and uh, this is inside the unit so you have a big sheet of metal plate hanging in the middle there's a transducer uh, like a speaker and either side are two pickups and they pick up the sound that is spat out of this transducer so if you imagine effectively the sound that you're sending to the reverb unit is coming out this little speaker agitating this huge metal plate and then these pickups either side are picking up that vibration of the plate and sending it back to you. Down in the bottom corner here, these are actually depictions of the amplifiers inside. And that will become more apparent uh, in a little while once we, we start looking at it. So that's what the plate unit looks like. You can actually collapse the interface to hide that. And this bunch of controls here is to depict the remote controller for the unit so this unit will sit in a remote room somewhere and then this unit here is a remote controller for the plate itself usually you would just have the controls of this front piece here some of this is uh, perhaps a bit of artistic uh, license because uh, this looks uh, looks quite nice and uh, I think a bit different than what the original uh, would look like the input and output faders as well and they're like quadrant faders and uh, again, I don't think you'll have faders like this on the real unit. You certainly don't on the ones that I've seen and used. I have access to two of these 140 plates and I will be doing some comparisons with this plugin in the future. So watch out for those. The plugin itself, you've got four different plates. So Abbey Road have obviously have four different plates and it tells you a little bit about Abbey Road's uh, history of plates in the user guide. So you can read through that. There's some stories about the studios and the plates themselves and in here somewhere it tells you that there are four plates a b c and d a b and c have got solid state amplifiers and d has got a tube amplifier so you can flick through each plate and they change color so that you can see which one's which so that's a that's b that's c and that's d now I mentioned at the beginning about the amplifiers on the side here. So if you go back to A, you'll notice this top half here is lit up, but the bottom half isn't. Same with B and C, they're all solid state. If you look at D, it lights up down the bottom here, showing you that that's the, uh, that's the valve amp. So uh, nice little touch there. So four different plates and uh, the different colors show you which is which and so they all have a different tone i don't think there's any two emt 140 plates in the world that sound the same and so why not have four of them and uh, i'll hopefully be able to show that when i do some demos of the, of the real thing against this that they won't sound the same so moving on swiftly you've got input and output level on these faders you got stereo link there or just a control link basically so that you could do independent control if you wanted to the original units themselves as you can tell i mean this is stereo input stereo output but the original units only got one transducer and two pickups so they're actually mono input and stereo out and even on a real unit they're like that but you do have dual inputs uh, left and right inputs on a real unit those left and right inputs are actually just summed to mono to come through this transducer so you're feeding it a sum signal and you're returning it in stereo so that's something you might want to consider when you are using the plugin you could split that across two channels you know have two different plates one for the left one for the right if you wanted to to get a true stereo signal so that's worth knowing there's a crosstalk slider here 
and apparently what that does is tries to give you a bit of stereo width between the left and the right when you've got a summed mono signal it tries to spread that a bit um, so you have to experiment with that and see how that goes in the middle here you've got a damper and the damper is really a absorption of the the time that the resonance continues through so if you imagine a room a big large empty room perhaps a tiled room like this like a bathroom and how reverberant it is the damper kind of emulates filling the room with acoustic treatment or varying amounts of acoustic treatment so the more you turn the damper down the less reverberant the sound is so what that actually is is a piece of acoustic material moving closer and closer to the physical plate itself so the damper is absorbing the reverberant sound open the damper up i.e move it further away and you get a lot longer reverb tail so that's what that's doing there the treble control is a top end brightness um, just adds more high end shimmer it's an eq really top end you know treble section of an eq you've got bass cut there as well um, usually in reverb bass is a lot less desirable you get a lot of low end rumble and muddiness from from bass with reverb so most of the time you would cut the low end out of reverb so it's good to have that low cut and that high control so that you can control the amount of shimmer at the top end you have a pre-delay control so that's basically like an early reflections uh, that's the distance of space and time between the real sound going in and when the reverb starts so pre-delay kind of suggests a, a larger room i.e the sound coming out and the time it takes to hit the reflection points or hit the walls and bounce back so a large room has a longer pre-delay because it takes longer for the sound to emulate out to the to the walls and bounce back again and that's what that is uh, emulating drive it's uh, amplifier drive so you can drive it a bit harder and get a bit of a warmer tone and analog that's something that's present on a lot of waves plugins where it it's the noise so the real units because they're analog there will be noise there signal to noise ratio will be a lot higher than a digital system and waves allow you to turn that off if you want something certainly a lot of people find with the waves plugins the more plugins you have inserted across channels with the noise switched on it can get accumulative and if you're not careful it can make your track sound quite hissy so it's nice to be able to turn that off and then uh, wet and dry control, which obviously you can have it on 100% wet if it's on an aux track um, or an effects track. Or you, if you want to put it on an insert, you can dial that back and have parallel processing within the plugin to save you some routing trouble. Something quite interesting as well is some nice uh, graphical movement here as well, which I'm sure is taking up some CPU cycles, but it uh, it looks nice. So. That is generally the controls. You can collapse that down to just the controller if you want. So that's the interface. And join me in part two for some sound examples. Thanks for watching.